to talk about the Buddhist philosophy, to talk about uh, how the philosophy starts, the Buddhism, how it starts, we have to go back like 2,600 years ago when Gautama Buddha, when he, when in his time, how it started. So we have, we first have to discuss about how the Buddhism, how the philosophy begin. So I will give you a brief explanation about how it started and what Buddhism really is. Then you can ask questions about your, about what you think about Buddhism and all that. Based on that, we can have a discussion. So, okay. I'll get a start to the teachings of Buddhism like this. Now, as you all know, like I said before, like 2,600 years ago, there was a person called Siddhartha. He was a prince in a royal family. And he, he is the prince who was about to get crowned in India. Not in the whole of India, but in a major part of India. So, as a prince, he had all the luxurious things that he wanted in his lay life, he, he had all the money, he had a palace, and he was like, you know, a prince. So with all that money that he had, but after quite some time in his life, if after spending like 20 years in his life, he understood that he needed to search for something beyond the re reaches of his limits. Then he left his palace, he left the life of a prince and then he went on to search for truth not knowing what he's actually searching for he went on to find some truth in life then at the age of 35 he came across the truth that he was looking for that he was searching about so what he wanted to find actually it comes it is said that it comes in four ways Gautam Buddha as Siddhartha he wanted to find something like this. Every human being who are born, they eventually die. So is there an answer beyond these two things for humans? That is first. The second thing that we want to find out is when we meet someone, when we meet someone, we always have to depart from that person. That is a universal law for everyone. So is there an answer beyond that goes beyond these two extremes in life? That's the second thing that he wanted to know. The third thing is, when a person is youthful, that person will be subjected to the aging process. Someone who is young will eventually become old. So is there an answer that goes beyond these two things in life? The fourth question that he had is, everyone who is healthy will become ill in their life. So, is there an answer that goes beyond these two extremes in life? So, it is said in 35th year in his life, he got the answer for those four questions that he had. Answers being, now, there, there is an answer that goes beyond the aging process. There is an answer that goes beyond meeting and departure. There is an answer that he found that goes beyond life and death. There is an answer that goes beyond the healthiness and illness in life. So what is this answer that he found out? The answer that he found out is the concepts that which are life and death, the concept of time, the concept of aging, the concepts that which have created throughout the world has all been created in a human mind. The thing that actually ages in life is not you, it is actually a concept within yourself. The concept that you, which you have created, is the reason why you age. So when you understand the mind, when you understand the concept of this mind that we talk about, that we are going to talk about, when you understand through and through what this mind is, you actually will have an answer that goes beyond the first four questions that someone has. So an ordinary person who lives, they don't really search for an answer that goes beyond 
those four questions that I had asked earlier, that Gautam Buddha had earlier. What normal, not normally, what usual people do is they get subjected to either of those extremes, then they go back to the previous one that they had. Now let's say you are ill of some sickness, then you try to become healthy. Then you take some medicine and you become healthy in life. Then you wound, wound up getting ill again. So that is what normal human process looks like. So what Gautama Buddha wanted, what Siddhartha wanted is an answer that goes beyond it. So the answer that which goes beyond it actually sits within yourself, actually sits within every one of us. Every one of us, there is a mind that we look with. Now when you understand that mind that you work with, when you understand why there's suffering in my mind, why there's all these things which are happening in my mind, when you find the reason, when you find the cause of that anger, when you find the cause of the suffering, you can actually liberate yourself from that. And that is what is called as enlightenment. That is the enlightenment that Buddhism talks about. Buddhism is actually a philosophy that talks about a way of life. It is not based on a... Because it is started as like 2600 years ago, it has become a religion now. But it really is a philosophy, a way of life. How to live a life without suffering. How to live, how to get enlightened through your mind. So that is what Buddhism talks about. So to give you like a little bit more to what Buddhism looks like, I will tell you something like this. When a normal human borns, like let's say for me, for example, when we are all born into a life, we don't really know who we are, right? We don't really know what we are. We don't know what country we live in. We don't know who our mothers and who our fathers are. We're just a pure human being. So when time passes by, when time goes on in life, when there's more and more time when you live on, what happens is you get data, you get information to your head about the society, about who your mother is, who your father is, what your name is, and the culture that we live in, the frames that is in these cultures that we live in. So when time goes on and on in your life, you collect more and more data, more and more information to your head throughout the society that you live in. So many data, so many information about how to live, what is good, what is bad, what is to be done in your life, what is not to be done in your life. Likewise, there are so many concepts that which has been created by the society, which you are bound to follow, to live a good life, right? To be happy. So the main purpose of everyone who's living is to be happy in life, right? Happiness is what we seek. So going on that path, what, pe what usually people se seek for by doing all the things that they do is to search happiness in their life. They go on with all the data that they have. They go on to a school. Teaching, by learning things, they intend to become happy in life. Then they are going on in life. Then they move on to a relationship with someone in search of happiness in life. Then they go on to marry. Then they go on to have a job, vehicles, cars, so many things in life in order to become happy in life. Then they have kids. All that process, all of that picture comes with searching of happiness. So what really happens here is, now when you go on search of happiness, through the data that you collected from the society, what happens is the data that you collected will become reality for you. The data of the concept, the concepts that which has been created in the society will become true to you. So when that concepts become true, when that concepts become reality, there's always a possibility that things, that there's an uncertain rule in this world, like anything can happen. When you are like attached to a certain extreme in your life, you will automatically reject the other part of it. By doing so, the process of suffering begin begins, not from the outside, from within yourself. So the teaching of Buddhism is actually to understand these two extremes which exist in the world, which exist in your mind, in within you. 
there's a two extremes which always happens within yourself. When you like attach yourself to one extreme, you automatically reject the other side of it. So when you understand these two extremes from within yourself, you will become an enlightened person. You will also find the four answers that which Gautam Buddha found from within him. You will also get the same answers. So the teaching of Buddhism, the philosophy of Buddhism is actually about living a life without suffering. So there isn't a God, there isn't a... No, it's like this. Now, there is no specific God in Buddhism, but when time moves on, like now there's like 2,600 years, there are a few gods, but the main purpose, it is not worshipping a God, but to understand a human mind that you and I have. All the Buddha statues that... What kind of worship? Are they worshipping the Buddha? Right. They... It's like this. Questions? Okay. I understand. Okay, it's like this. Now, in our monastery as well, we have certain statues that we have. So, the statues in Buddhism, it is actually a culture. The culture that has been created to worship and do all those things. We worship trees. There are some pagodas that we worship. So, Buddhism approaches several levels of human minds. Every human has a mind, right? They do work with using a mind. So in Buddhism, not only in Buddhism, in every religion that there is, it approaches different levels of mindsets of humans. So for a person, let's say, who doesn't really understand how their mind works, who really doesn't understand their desires and why things are happening to them, they don't really understand how all that works. But there is a chance for them to like go and worship and ask a higher power, like ask the divine nature to intervene and say, okay, help me God, something like that. So for that level of mindsets, that is the approach of statues in Buddhism. So if there's a person that really I understand why the things that are happening to him, if he knows that the way he thinks is why he suffers in life, the teaching of Buddhism, the core teaching of Buddhism is about understanding the mind. So if you really understand your mind, there is nothing to worship to anyone. If you understand from within you that everything that which has happened, the suffering that you are enduring right now, it is because of the way you think. Actually, every time you suffer in life, the real reason for that is the way you think. So when you understand that process of thinking, when you understand how to get out from that thinking, you don't need to worship anything, you just have to understand from within yourself what has happened. So that is the core teaching of Buddhism, to understand mind. I was going to ask, is in Buddhism, is meditation essential to um, the practice? Okay. Meditation, it's like this. Now, meditation is majorly done in two parts all around the world. There are two major practices that, ha which, that which has been practiced around the world. The first thing that most of the humans do is called stillness meditation. In singles, we call it uh, Samatha. I don't know whether you've heard it. Samatha is stillness meditation. Stillness meditation is done like this. Now, you go on to a quiet place and you sit, your, sit down and put one hand above the other and you close your eyes and then you concentrate your mind into a certain thought in your mind. Or you concentrate your mind to the sound of the fan. Or you concentrate your mind into the breathing. Not to the whole process of breathing, but to a certain point, maybe the tip of your nose, maybe your stomach. So you concentrate your mind into a certain point and do breathing. So that is stillness meditation. Okay. Now that is the most widely used meditation method. So to achieve actually a bliss by using this stillness meditation, you have to practice that for a long time consistently. Okay, you have to like sit down for five, six hours. It depends on the person, but it has to practice like continuously. When you concentrate your mind into a certain point, when time goes on like that, you will feel enormous bliss from within you, from that meditation. Like you will never feel anything else. You will never feel a 
bliss like that from anything else from the outside world. So, but there's a little problem with this stillness meditation. The problem being that after you finish your meditation, when you go back to the society, when you go back to your job, when you go back to the normal city that you live in, when you go back to your family, when you come across the problems that you faced before, when there's a problem in your job, when there's a problem in your social life, that bliss that you had will not help you. You will feel the normal stress, depression, anxiety, all that you felt like same as before. So in, in a moment like that, where you can find bliss at, that you have to go to a place again when you face, face a problem, you have to go to a like quiet place and start to meditate again to achieve that bliss. There's another part, there's another method of meditation which is called Vipassana. Vipassana meditation is the essential, essentially it is called Vipassana because it is, uh, it is there to understand the human mind. To do Vipassana, you don't have to sit down. You don't have to close your eyes and do that. Vipassana is understanding your mind. The most, uh, the greatest time to do Vipassana is the society that you live in. Is the, uh, when the surrounding is problematic, that is the greatest time to do Vipassana, to practice Vipassana. So when you understand the concepts of Vipassana, what will happen to you is that you will be in an endless meditation. You will meditate even when you're walking, even when you're sitting. When you face a problem, that is where you do Vipassana. So I'll explain a little bit more on that. Okay. So how to do Vipassana? It's like this. Now let's say for an example, now, uh, okay. Now I'm, I'm doing some work. Let's say for an example, I'm doing some work and suddenly someone comes and he start to, he's starting to blame me. He's like shouting and saying, okay, why did he do that? Why did you do that? He's like blaming so hard and so harsh. Now, what is the normal reaction that people get? Upset, angry, things like that. When you come across the situation, that is where you do Vipassana. So Vipassana is actually this. Vipassana is understanding the cause of your troubles, the cause of your anger, the cause why you are upset. So in normal society, what happens is, Normally, people point their finger towards the outside world, okay, the per there's a person who's blaming me. The, the upset that I get, the anger that I'm getting is because of his blames that he's putting to me without, without I'm even doing, I, I haven't even done anything wrong, but that person is blaming me. So the reason for your suffering, for your upsetness is that person outside. So in Vipassana, we try to understand the cause. The cause of your, in reality, the cause of your suffering, cause of your anger is not actually the person who is in the outside world. The problem is the way you think. When you change, when you, you have clearly understand that you have created a frame from within yourself that people should not blame me. That is a frame that you yourself has created. And you are the one who is suffering from the frame that you have created. For an example, let's say I, I give you, let's say I give you a piece of paper, a blank paper. Then I'm asking you to draw a demon in it, a devil. Now you're drawing a devil. Then I'm going to give you some colors and I'm asking you to color the demon that you drew. You're coloring that demon. And then if I ask you to look at it and be frightened from it, can you do that? Why? Because you created it. Because you know you are the one who drew this demon. You know because you are the one who colored it, you cannot be frightened from it. But the exact same process happened from your mind as well, from our minds. Our minds create certain pictures from ourselves about how the world should be, how a person should be, how my fiance should be, how my children should be. Those things are created in your mind. You are the one who is coloring it. You are the one who is adding all the things that, is, that which is in there. But you, but for unfortunately, because you cannot see from your ignorance the reality in it, what happens is you get attached to those expectations, 
attached to the expectations that you have created from your mind for the outside world. When you attach yourself to the expectations, when you attach yourself to these frames that you have created, you will suffer in life. Not because of the outside world, not because of the government, not because of your children, not because of your husbands and wives, not because of the neighbors, not because of the society, because of the way you think. So in Vipassana, what we teach is to understand how you think, understand why they're suffering. The suffering always comes because of the wrong way that you think. So Vipassana doesn't have, you don't have to sit down and do Vipassana. For your question, seated meditation is not a must to understand human mind. What is a must is to have the idea, okay, to truly understand the cause of your suffering. To do that, you can do it like when you're walking. It is also a part, kind of meditation. You, do, you have to do Vipassana. So seated meditation is not a must. You know, as in, as in stillness meditation, you don't have to do it. I'm not telling you don't do it. Doing it will like make you, a, make you into a blissful place. But I told you the problem in it. But we have to, what you have to practice with Vipassana is the way you think. Is why there's, you have to really have to understand the expectations that a person has, that you yourself has. I want to thank you for your comments. I do have um, enlightenment. <clears throat> if I had, to use an example, if there was 10 people that were uh, attempting to attain enlightenment, is it correct to say that 10 people being different would all take a different approach to be able to attain it? Yes. my first one. But my Second question would be, if they attain enlightenment, the 10 individuals, would they all be at the same location? Or would they be at a different location, potentially by the pathway they came, their thought process, and their point of saying, I, I, have, I have reached, I have reached that, the goal that I was intending. Okay. So the f first question is, there are 10 approaches. For 10 people, the same approach won't work because a human mind works differently for everyone. Let's say, for an example, I ask you to think about, just I'm going to say just a one word, mother. So you're going to think about your mother, you're going to think about your mother, she's going to think about her mother. But I just spoke one word, mother. So human mind, the process of human, every human mind is different from one another. It is perspective to each other. The things that which you are desirous will not be the things that she is desirous, will not be the things that she desires. So desires change, the way they think change, the expectation change. So the approach to understanding the mind is also different to each and every one of us. After going through these different paths, the truth that they will encounter will be the same. the way they think will not be the same. The understanding they have, the experience that they have will be the same. The experience, let's say, I will give you an example like this. Okay. Now, imagine you are a person who has not drinking water in your life. You don't know what water tastes like. Okay. Listen to this closely. Okay? Now, you don't know what water tastes like. Okay. Now, I'm going to drink some water and I'm going to explain how water feels like. Okay. I'm going to say so many things. I, I, the, at the first sip, I felt like this in my mouth, then in my throat, in my stomach, going down. I can say so many things. It is warm, it is hot. I can say so many things. But will you really understand what I'm trying to say, tell you? Will you really get the like experience from it? No. Right? But I can show you a way, okay, make your hand out like this, take the cup and drink. After drinking water, then alone you will understand, you will truly know what the experience is like. The experience will be the same, but the way they reach for it, what they do after will be different. So 10, 10 people who are enlightened, the experience that they have about their mind will be the same. 
but the thought process will change. What they will really understand is how their minds work. What they will really accomplish is that they will have no desire towards the outside world. They don't have frames within themselves about what is happening in the world. So that is what they understand. But the way they think, the way they do things, it, different, it is also different from one another. Does that make sense? And because uh, we still it down maybe a little bit further, but the physicality of something that you know, and and then and there's a shared response across people to make the light, that they would be enlightened, they would be able to communicate an uh, essence amongst these very superficially, they taste it in water. Is that essence something that can be explained, that much like you did with the glass of water? The person who has never drank. Are you asking through words? So, thinking of, of other religions where they have like a form that provides something of a, of a pathway to essence of you know, faith or concept of good words. Essence of becoming enlightened. To a point where person would be at that level would understand and would be able to explain it to another person who's also at that same level. They do no argument about it. But then there are the respites who aren't at that level. Okay. And to be able to come to that level, uh, they need a well-defined path. Okay. So with enlightenment, okay. is there a well-defined pathway that would um, be, could be shareable. Okay. I understand. I think I understand your question. It's like this. Now, let's say the well defined guideline is to, like I said before, understanding your deeply attached expectations. So, why do you, why do someone want to search for an enlightenment in their life? What is the reason that they search for truth? Sorry? Because, because of suffering, right? If you're if you're not like sad, if you're not suffering in life, you don't need any enlightenment, right? Let's say you're happy all the time, you are like you don't have any problem in life. So there's no need to like enlighten and search for a truth, right? If you like only know that the life that you're living is a lie. Is this really what life is? When you get those questions, those, those kind of questions, then only you try to seek, seek for truth. Am I right? Yes. If you are happy, if you don't have any problems in life, if you don't want to search for anything like goes beyond life and death, okay? Then there is no real reason for you to search for enlightenment. Like Sorry? I sound like a good divine. What, living and death? Living in place of it. Sorry? Living in place of um, uh, not ask, Not going forward with questions as to why are you here? The purpose of life. Okay. Um, okay, now, now why, why do you need the purpose of life if you're like, if you're happy, if you're not sad about anything, then you shouldn't have a purpose. In, like, why should you find a, why should you look for a purpose if you're like satisfied with where you are? Well, that would be my question. It's not to sound active, but I <laughs> think that's, that's what, that's what people should do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's, that, that's what I'm trying to ask you. Now, that is what normal people do, thinking that this is life, right? This is life, suffering and happiness, that is life. So among these people, there are people who actually search for a purpose in life, right? There are people who actually think, okay, is there a state in mind that which goes beyond these things that we experience, right? When there's a person like that comes, he knows his suffering. He knows that he, he has felt sad in his life. He had felt happy in his life. He knows the two extremes. He's looking for something that goes beyond. So for that person, like you said, the essence is, understanding why there's, like I said before, the cause of their unhappiness, the cause of their happiness, he's trying to understand how it works. So 
there's no well-defined guideline. Okay, do this and you will enlighten. Now, after listening to this, I'm not asking you to go back and do anything specific in life. You go on to do the same way that you were living. You go on to do the same things that you were doing before you coming here. Let's say, for example, if you're a doctor, you go back and do surgeries and do all those things. No problem. But when you come across pressure in your life, when you come across anger, when you are upset in life, when you, after coming to here, what I'm asking you is to do vipassana at that time. That is the path that you will have. At the moment that you suffer, at the moment that you are angry, try to understand the real cause of your anger. Try to understand the reality of the situation. That is the path that you have. It's not a process. Yeah, the process. The essence of it. Is that good enough answer? I think I, I understand the concept. I have not before, but I'm just going to ask you what is it in life? But I think I, I, think I get it. It's my own, I guess. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. Now, that is how human mind works, no? We, we try to imagine some things, that is okay. Can you tell us something about this place? Okay. Okay. Uh, this place was formed like 10 years ago, probably 9, 10 years ago, uh, which, which was created by my chief monk. He's my teacher. He's not here, actually. He's in Australia, like we said before. Uh, he's the one who normally does this thing discussion and they translate. He's not here today, so that is why I'm doing it. So uh, this place in here, we have like 30 monks and 15 or so, 16 nuns who are living here. And we have like every one of us, we wake up at four o'clock in the morning and we have a chanting session at 4.30. We have breakfast at 6.30 and after that we do engage in normal activities in life, like construction work, cleaning, things like that. In the afternoon, we have, a, we have lunch at 11.30. And then in the evening, we have another chanting session. And then at like 9, 10 o'clock at night, we go back to sleep. Other than that, we have started a university in this monastery like a year ago. So it's like 150 students who are living here. No, actually 170 students who are living here now. Yes. Students as in from ages of 21, 20 to 25. So the accommodation, the education and food is everything for free for these kids. We have two badges actually. 120, 30 students are engaged in IT. We, we are giving them a diploma in IT, web development and all those things. And then there's like another batch of 50 or so students, 40 students actually. We are teaching them music, Indian and Sri Lankan heritage music. So that is the ongoing processes in this monastery. We have given them accommodation, free food, free education. The real reason why we started a campus is not to like make them educated in technologies. That is one thing. But the reason why we started this is as a model to show the world that the, the kids should be educated about humanity as well which something the world lacks these days, I think. So we're trying to teach them how to like help others, how to like be kind to the world, things like that as well with the technology as well, how to like love the environment. We have an organization we have called Planet Protectors. We grow trees, we like cleaning the beaches and stuff, polythene. We do lots of things. So that is the normal process in which this monastery goes on. Still hot? No, it's, it's the... Too much? No, no, no. It's one here in Ah, okay. So you... <laughs> no, it's like this. Now, things which are happening to you is not actually in your mind. Okay? Things are happening. Okay? The way you think about these things is what matters. If you are having a problem with something that which has happened, then you have to understand the problem that you created is because of the way you think, because of the frames that you have, because of the attachment that you have. So when you understand that, for even for a cup of tea, there's a certain frame in your mind, okay, the cup of tea should be like this. 
the sugar level in it, the tea level in it, the way it should be served, the way it should be prepared, everything. You have a certain frame in your mind. I'm not telling you it is a bad thing. It is okay to have a frame. But if you're too much attached to the frame that you have created, then that is the problem. Then you will suffer. Then you will feel anger. Then, then that is the reason of your suffering. And that's the resolution process. That is actually the process of understanding your mind. You always point the finger towards the outside world. You always try to put the blame to the outside. But in reality, it is the way you think. It is the own way of your mind process that makes you unhappy in life. Let's for an example say death. Okay? The illusion of time. So for an example, let's say you always get scared about the death from a situation that which you have created in the future, right? You are scared of death, not now. You, are, you can imagine something which will happen in the future, let's say an accident, maybe something else like uh, a virus, whatever reason. You, you can create something in your mind, you can imagine a situation in the future like you see it and be frightened from it. So, the future that you have created in your mind has become real, right? That is why you're frightened now. But the future that you are creating, is it actually true? Is it really true that you, the future that you are creating in your mind? Let's say for an example, okay? I will ask you, what's your name? Sorry? Scott. Scott. Okay. So, for an example, let's say, plan something that you will do next week. I'm planning something that I will be doing next week. Next week, I plan to see you. Friends. Who? Friends. Sorry? I, I, something that I plan to do next week. Yes. Next week, I plan to see my branch. Ah, your branch. Okay. So, I want to plan you seeing your grandchildren now, the way you're going there. So, are your grandkids in your house or your kids' house? In an open network, um, but they could be there. They could be at parents' house. Okay, let's say the parents' house. Let's say their parents' house. So, what color is your parents' house? Not parents' house, their, their parents' house. The color of their house. The color, the paint. Light green and one green. No. So that is the future that you have created. What you're going to do next week, you're going to see the grandkids in house which has light green color paint. So think about it. Okay? So is it really true what you think about from your mind about the future? Or is it a reflection of the house that you saw in your past, which has been? I, I, I think I understand it. Life is a, fear, is a series of constructs. Life, life is a series of memories. It is a series of data that which is in your mind. Your past is actually reflecting as your future. Right? So... Is your future really true? Um, it could be. It could be, but there's also a possibility that it won't be, right? But people tend to think about their future and get attached to those things. People get attached to the expectations that they have, okay, this should happen next week. Let's say for an example, we set up a meeting time at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You and I are about to meet at tomorrow, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, you are there at four o'clock, but I'm not there. But you will be really angry if I am not there at time. 4.30, I'm not there. Five o'clock, I'm not there. Then you're calling and saying, okay, why, why are you doing like that? You are so angry, you are blaming people. So it's, the, it's really the reason that, that, your, that your future that you have created with me, is it really true, the future that you have created in your mind, which is not happened, is it the cause of your problem? Is this the cause of your anger? No. The cause of your anger is the 
future that you have created has become reality to you. You have an expectation, okay, we set up a time to meet, but the person we are supposed to meet is not showing up at time. So it is okay to tell him, okay, why aren't you at time? It is okay. But if you are angry from within yourself, you have to understand the reason for your anger is the way you think. It is because of the misunderstanding. It is because of the delusion that which has been created in mind. I, I understand the concept. You, you really have done a wonderful job in explaining. I, I, I'm it comes from our. It comes from my chief monk. <laughs> Very Any more questions? <laughs> you, you know, the kind of the, the, I guess the essence of the question that I was I was looking for it, it's really been you've done a wonderful job in, in, in providing a, a different perspective than approach to your religion. And I thank you very much. So listen to those videos as well. We'll do the same thing for you. So I'm really happy that I got to meet you all today. So I bless you all for your encounters encounters in your life. So thank you.